I'm Matt Martinez. I'm the chair of Root HCM Accelerating Guideline-Driven Care. This is your quick tip on the electrocardiogram. Remember that there are typical patterns you're going to encounter when you're looking for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and that many were, are going to bring in an electrocardiogram quoted as abnormal and you can identify specific patterns, namely T-wave inversions in uh, uh, anterior leads up to V2 and V3, the lateral leads 1, AVL, and V5 and V6, specifically T-wave inversions beyond V4, V5, and V6. Inferior and infralateral findings are all typical ECG patterns you may encounter. They may also have ST depression, which helps strengthen the likelihood that you're going to find some underlying pathologic finding. And then finally, look for Q waves. These are typical patterns you're going to encounter for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And remember some critical missteps, that a normal ECG pattern is encountered in about 10% of those with HCM. So a normal ECG does not exclude hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And that ECG changes can often precede left ventricular hypertrophy. So if you see ECG changes and you have a normal imaging study, follow up of that abnormal ECG is required with annual cardiac imaging. If your suspicion is high, one echo may not be enough. That not only do you need serial evaluations, but that in those with significantly abnormal ECGs or a family history, or if the stakes are high, like in those that are participating in sports, consider a cardiac MRI to exclude features of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And that ECG should also match the imaging findings. So if you have marked hypertrophy by cardiac imaging, and you have normal or low voltage, start to think about other diseases like infiltrative cardiomyopathy and, and other phenocopies if the ECG and the imaging don't match. And then finally, remember that there are some normal patterns that can look concerning. The so-called juvenile ECG pattern, those age under the age of 16, can have T-wave inversions in V1 and V3 that over the age of 16 disappear. So follow-up imaging by ECG is important to make sure that those resolve. And then look for anterior T-wave inversions in black athletes, typically V2 and V3, never beyond V4. They're associated with J-point elevation and that convex ST segment elevation, along with a, T -wave, a deep T-wave inversion and a asymmetric steep downslope afterwards. Those are normal findings. And that those features alone are not enough to make a, make a diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And that's where making sure you understand the patterns of ECG in both normals and those you might have a heightened suspicion for HCM are really important. This is your quick tip. Thanks for joining us on Root HCM.